Yeah. Uh, please. <laughs> you, want me to, you want me to jump in, Sonia? Sure, please do. All right. So just a little bit about me. Um, I live in Maine. Maine, Portland, Maine. Yeah. Portland, right, that's right, Sonia, Portland, Maine. And so we just live off the coast of Maine in a small town called Gorham. I live here with my husband, Mark, and my dog, Capper. Now, our dog, Capper, got his name when my husband was serving as a TL. And of course, what else would you want to name your dog except for Capper, Capper. right? For yeah. those that are on the call and we understand what that term capper means, it means that's the day that you start receiving a hundred percent commission. So our dog's yeah. name is Capper. We have two children, Ben and Danielle. I've got a granddaughter who's 12. And uh, I have to add, we've got two horses now. My oh daughter, my gosh. Yeah, my yes. daughter a horse named Leo. And we just went into a business contract with my granddaughter and she, we bought her a, um, a Marisian. It's a, a cross between a Morgan and a Frisian. He's about 14, two hands. And so she took 5%, she took her money and invested 5% in the total purchase price. And my husband and I invested the, the balance, 95%. So we're beginning to teach Mackenzie about business at her age. So it's going to be a fun venture. Uh, Sammy is just a darling horse. He's just all black, beautiful, the long flowing mane and, and uh, tail and so forth. So that's a little bit about us. And um, and so I, I appreciate you guys sending the sunshine here to Maine. Yesterday was cloudy and rainy, and today is blue skies, and, um, and it's going to be a nice day. So I appreciate that. So, Sonia, you know, when I think about my real estate journey, I think about that bold law that people grow into the conversations you create around them, right? You and I do that a lot as coaches, People grow into the conversation you create around them. And so I was working at a, um, at a bank. Uh, I was working in the division private banking and investing. I was a single mom. Times were tough. I'm not even, I think I made minimum wage, just barely making it. And my dad would say to me every once in a while, geez, you'd, you'd make a great real estate broker, Right. I'm not sure what he saw in me back then. Um, I, didn't, I didn't jump to the opportunity. So that's what it means by people grow into the conversations you create around them. Mm -hmm. An event happened at the bank and it made me all of a sudden one day remember that, hmm, I'd make a great real estate agent. And a friend of mine, Connie, she and her husband owned an ERA franchise. And so I went to Connie and just said, you know, what does it take to be successful in real estate? And there goes the story. So I, mm -hmm. I sat for my license, I became licensed and I joined a franchise up here. I'm not sure if you have them in California. It's called ERA Today. And mm -hmm. so when I went to ERA Today, check this out. They gave me a small, this was 24 years ago. So let's put that into perspective. <laughs> they gave me a small brown desk. They gave me a landline. Any of you old enough on this call, that's the phone that you have to plug into the wall, right? So they gave me a landline and they gave me a telephone book. That was it. Hmm. 24 years ago, I didn't get any training. I wasn't taught how to generate for leads. I didn't know what to do with the lead once you got them. I didn't know how to negotiate a contract and bulletproof that contract so you could get it successfully to closing. I wasn't sure what to do with the client after the closing. And so, you know, that was, it was a tough six years at ERA today before I finally heard the, uh, the, um, the story about Keller Williams, which was still fairly new in our state. I think my best year at ERA was 15 closed transactions, but that's 15 closed transactions very much on a roller coaster. And 15 closed transactions back then, 24 years ago, it might have been around $40,000. So having a family of two, you know, and a husband, a family of two, $40,000. Now, our economics are much, much different um, in Maine than they are in California. 
but still 40 grand was, wasn't a whole lot. And so yeah. six years later, um, friends of ours, Dan and Julie, who had been at ERA today and were now at Keller Williams came and talked to Mark and I about the opportunity. And, you know, what we saw when we saw this opportunity, I'm just going to refer to some notes so I can make sure that I don't miss the important parts yeah. is, um, is we saw an opportunity to create legacy income mm. at Keller Williams through the profit share. We saw that it was a great cultural fit and a company that our kids could be proud of us being, being at, right? Uh, we saw that there was a company that we could learn and grow and be supported. Remember that six years previously, I had nothing, I had no support. Oh, and the part of the story that I missed that's really important here is uh, when I had that small brown desk, landline and telephone book, I shared the office with a gal named Lori. And in my first week, I heard Lori on a, on a call with her client. When she got off the call, I said, because it was the most amount of training I'd gotten that week. I said, oh my God, that was so amazing. I just loved how you handled that call. The next day I showed up, Lori had moved out of the office. So it was, oh, no. now, yeah, so it was now an office of one. Ah. Because in the industry, we, we don't share trade secrets right? We don't right. want our competitor to, to learn from us so that they could then go out and take business from us. So yeah, it was then an office of one. So obviously when I saw the Keller Williams opportunity that was somebody would actually share their trade secrets, they would actually have a coaching program and be in the room and teach me how to lead generate that, that was a, a win, win, win. Wow. And so yeah. And so yeah, I know. that's, second, it's that's like, incredible. Wait, do you really think she moved out because you said that? Absolutely. 100%. Wow. That is incredible. You guys yeah. all hear that. <laughs> that's incredible. And we don't do that at all. That's like the opposite of our, our culture is, Hey, I'm making cold calls. Come listen to us in the training room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that isn't that wild? Can you imagine? And and I and sometimes that environment still exists in our industry. And so when people start at Keller Williams, they really have no idea the great yeah. gift, right? The great gift. And I, so I, I, I remember Tammy when when um when I first walked in, I I literally felt like it was a 180 from where I was coming from. I mean, it's not just the real estate industry, it's everywhere, right? Um, so, so when I walked in, I was like, is this real life? Is, are people really just nice? I, I, I just couldn't even believe it. Like everybody yeah. was like, so incredible. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I distinctly remember that feeling. Yeah. Well, mm. Keller Williams has been home for us for about 17 years. And so, you know, a good friend of ours, Diana Kokoska, she's a good friend of Sonia's too. She always used to say that you're always auditioning for your next opportunity. And so what we learned from, from being at Keller Williams is that, hey, when you come at it with contribution, you participate at the market center, you volunteer to do things, you volunteer to teach classes, well, that's just prepping you for the next opportunity. And Mark and I have had a ton of opportunity at Keller Williams. Within a short period of time, he became a TL. Within a short period of time, I was one of the top 20% brokers at Keller Williams and got asked to sit on the ALC. I think at that point in time, remember before teams and right now teams do what? Thousands of units each year. This was before teams. I think 50 units closed, put me in the top 20% at Keller Williams. From the ALC, I learned how to run a company. Mm. You know, I learned how to inspect the finances of the company in the market center. It put me in a position to have to make win, win, win decisions that affected everybody at the company, not just a few. From there, I served on the market center leadership committees like the culture committee and the finance committee. And I earned the right then to become a, a team leader myself. Our MCA just walked out one day. And because of my banking experience, of course, Tammy can handle the finances. There you go, Tammy, go ahead. <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> yep. So served as the MCA GM productivity coach. And ultimately, because what, and we'll get into this a little bit later, what MAPS looks for is it looks for you to excel in your current position. 
And so through those opportunities, serving in those roles at a very, very high level, it put me in position for the next opportunity, the next opportunity, and the next opportunity. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So um, <clears throat> everyone on this call, um, we have Calabasas, we've got Newport Beach. From what I see, we even have, Susan, where are you at? I forget what your market center is. Um, we have uh, Manhattan Beach. We have, I think, South Bay, Bakersfield. And I'm not sure. I think Susan is, is Calabasas or even further somewhere. So um, Calabasas, Calabasas. Oh, she's Calabasas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, so, so, you know, I, I really, I wanted to bring Tammy on because I want everyone to know one of the biggest things that happened in my life, um, aside from joining Keller Williams, when I actually joined, I had a great team leader who sat me down and actually drew out the career opportunity map for me. And I had no idea. I, I, I you know, we, we have so many acronyms and like, different Keller, Kellerisms, Keller language are a whole entire own little language, right? That um, I think it's really easy for agents to be very like, okay, well, that's an OP and that's a TL and this is a blah, blah, blah. And it, and it becomes kind of confusing, but the career opportunities are just so incredible. And especially with, with the MAPS side, which isn't it, isn't maps now bigger than the actual like real estate side of Keller Williams? Is that the, is, am I being incorrect or correct in that? Well, you might be Sonia, it depends on which yeah. metric you're looking at. I mean, obviously we've got over 800, um, 800 market centers and yeah. we over, we have over 300 maps coaches. So it depends on which metrics that you're measuring. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, yeah. Mark and I, Mark and I were on a, um, we're on a vacation in 2021 in the Dominican Republic. And when we were at the resort, there was this gentleman that was walking around that the staff just kind of seemed to fall all over. Like they couldn't, they couldn't serve him fast enough. He had the best suite in the resort. He just kind of had this air about him that he was somebody, you know? Mm. So, so my husband, Mark, being who he is, he, um, he walked up to the gentleman, asked what he did. And, um, he was responsible for trash management in the entire Caribbean in taking the trash and repurposing it and being able to fuel the islands. So Mark asked him for 15 minutes. And uh, so we got 15 minutes with him. And he said, you know, Mark said to this gentleman, if I was to write a book, what would the one piece of advice that you would want me to put in this book for readers to read? And he said, I would want people to know to walk through the open doors. He said, there are open doors all around us and we, we, we've stopped noticing them. He said, walk through the open doors. If it's not the right one, you can turn right back around and look for the next open door. And that's really what we did with, with our opportunity at Keller Williams. You know, I survived four market cycles four market cycles. One of those was the worst economic situation that we've had, <laughs> right? The Great Recession. I learned the importance of always lead generating for talent. I learned the importance of personal growth that impacts me and also generations to come. So my Keller story, Sonia, and I'm so glad that you asked it. And as I got ready for today, mm -hmm. it was probably the first time that I'd taken a moment to reflect back. It's been a life altering opportunity. So I just want to leave you guys with that sage advice from that really successful businessman to always look for the open door and don't be afraid to walk through it. If it's not the right opportunity, you can turn right back around and walk through another one. Isn't that insane? I mean, I, I think that that's such a, what a smart guy, first of all, but, um, <laughs> You know, uh, I, I, you know, I actually have that, that mindset myself where I'm like, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Right. I mean, that's how I ended up in the United States from Finland. <laughs> so, um, but, um, Philip, do you have anything on that? Or, uh, I just, I'm just curious. Philip is the, uh, assistant team leader at Calabasas. Oh. Um, I love what you shared Tammy about, you know, 
you get opportunities through volunteering. Like a lot of times agents who transfer over or who get productive think, oh, you know, it's a waste of my time. I should just be sticking to lead generation or whatever, which is true. You know, you really do got to stick to the one rule of five plus manage your money. Um, but there's this part of giving a little bit of yourself that makes you this much more stronger, meaning that you become more of a master when you're teaching something as, um, as fundamental as lead generation, how to write a contract, how to write a two minute contract by setting up templates, all the stuff that we may just do naturally or pick up, we become, you know, we become more proficient, better fiduciaries. And we actually start thinking about how our process runs when we're trying to teach someone else. And, and, and the, the misnomer is, is that, oh, I'm teaching my competition. No, you're actually raising the next crop of leaders. And, um, you know, that's a sad reality, but in real estate, you know, 80, was it 80% turnover rate after five years? So after five years, 80% of us aren't in the business, unfortunately, <laughs> for whatever reason, we either make it super big, we become investors, we, we follow different passions or paths, whatever it is. But what people forget is that you're building these relationships for the long term. I could be out of the business in five years for whatever the reason. And I'll think of Nicole when it comes to Calabasas or Christine or Eileen when it comes to like Simi Valley or whatever, right? And I'm going to think, oh, hey, if Eileen's still in it, I'm calling Eileen for Simi, right? It's like a no brainer. But those relationships aren't built if there isn't this, this, um, this um, part in us that says, hey, I want to volunteer. I want to be a part of this. And then opportunities come from that too. I mean, you know, leadership is the premium right now, right? I, I mean, that we tons of agents, tons of realtors, tons of sales, very few leaders, right? The leaders yeah. who really like put their hand up and really develop themselves and see that they're here as an influencer, not just for likes and and follows on Instagram or whatever, but most more so in the field of life. That that's going to be the difference maker, not just in the short term, but in our, in our long term careers and future. Yeah, through, uh, through volunteering at the Market Center, um, I learned how to run a multi-million dollar company. My husband and I are investors in one of the top 10 um, highest profit sharing companies in, in the country, maybe internationally, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and so oh, walking through that open door and just being a servant leader, um, those were great lessons uh, when as serving in the market center is learning, understanding how to be a certain, a servant leader. And what that also does is it excels your personal growth because being a servant leader, it's not always fun all the time, right? <laughs> not always fun all the time. You're going to keep your ego in check, right? You're going to, you're going to do the right thing for all, not just yourself, Right. So walking through those open doors, especially at Keller Williams Realty, is a huge gift to yourself, for your family and for generations to come. And hopefully Mark and I are just a very small example of that. You guys are so awesome. So Tammy's husband, Mark, is also a bull coach um, and he's been a team leader. I, was he a team leader for what did you say? Seven years of a market center? Seven years. And, yep. Seven years. He came off the road during COVID and is now he coaches Malaysia. He coaches Aruba. He coaches all around the, the internationally and within the country. So there's a, yet another opportunity, right? That we didn't see when we saw the Keller Williams opportunity and we thought, well, it's a good cultural fit and we can big, build some legacy money. We never saw the true impact. And this has happened and transpired but gradually gradually, gradually seven. over seven, 17 years of being at Keller Williams. Yeah. yeah. And we're not, when we're not, we're certainly not done. Yeah. Amazing. Christine, Christine, Christine what you got? Yeah, I put my camera on. Here I am. No makeup. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. great to anyway, see. Before I first want to start is Philip, you look amazing. I love this. You look very hot. Am I allowed to say that on here? <laughs> um, I was just going to make a comment and I, and I love this so much. And that, that thought that you gave about, you know, walking through the door, you know, I love that. I'm going to really carry that with me and look at opportunities like that. I was just going to make a comment. Cause I laughed when you said about, they gave you the phone book. So, yeah. you know, I started it a long, long, long time ago in the eighties, there was no internet. You guys have to think about this. There was no, you know, cell phone. You know, yeah. We barely started getting pagers, you know, and I forgot what it was, but you'd write 4-4 so you could turn it over and say hello to someone, if you guys remember that. Okay. 
And um, but we would we would do floor time, which we don't really do that anymore. But we had floor time, and we had one computer that really wasn't a computer, but it was our like like a, I don't even know what it's called, but it went eh, 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 like this, and you would you would sign up to get to spend an hour on it. And if you wanted to know what the listings were, there was a, a company who would drive down Ventura Boulevard where we are and and put, put a flyer. And if you wanted to give another office your flyers, you would pay them to go down the office to give flyers. And that's how we found out what was on the market. I'm so for now we could do everything from our phone. Yeah. yeah, yeah what about yeah. those what about those bag phones that you had in your car that were eight dollars per minute? That's before cell phones, right? Yeah. Or the big cord. Yeah. <laughs> Right. You're bringing, okay. you're bringing you're bringing way back. You just Christine. put a fake phone in your car and you drive around like this. Yeah. Yeah, you're bringing me way back. So, so Wait, Christine, you you're so totally much. you're you're totally dating yourself. I had no idea that you were that old. <laughs> hey, hey no. you know, just say that. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. I, I was 12 years old when I got my license. That's right. That's right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. It's, it's a, um, such a privilege to have a MAPS coach and especially Sonia's coach. Um, thank you for everything. Um, it's it's really great. I appreciate it. I thank you guys for being here and investing in yourselves. And I trust by the time we're done here in just a few minutes that you'll be able to walk away with something that's added to your life and you can apply. Oh my gosh. Time flies so fast, right? So, so um what I wanted to ask you, Tammy, is about mindset and like something that you've learned. Um, what do you think affects our the age and success? And maybe we're not going to go into the whole financial ceiling of things, but there are we do have bold running at the moment and uh, multiple people in bold. So, um, what do you what do you think in terms of mindset? Because we we really like. This is a mindset call in the mornings. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the thing that that helps agents mostly succeed in terms of mindset? Yeah, well, um, it's a great question, Sonia. You know, mindset for me starts with the first blink in the morning. It starts with the first blink when you wake up. And what I mean by that is I do believe that there is a God. I believe that there are good and evil forces in the world. And, and from the blink in the morning, your mind starts playing games with us. I don't, I don't really need to go to script and role play or real estate mm -hmm. conversations. I actually know what to say. Well, I think I'll push off lead generation today. It's been a tough, yesterday was a tough day. I owe myself, right? Whatever it is that the battle of your mind starts playing with you from the first blink, be aware of it, notice it, see what you're gonna to do tomorrow morning at the first blink and your mind starts challenging you on what you know is right to do in business and what your, what your mind wants to play games with you around, right? So resist that temptation. Sonia, your question, what's the most important thing to do? You know, I've, I've been licensed for 24 years. Um, I wished that I had followed what I had learned six years into my career. I wished I learned about a database being a data bank because 24 years later, you know, our, our Mainers, we're, we're, we're kind of funny people. We don't like people <laughs> to tell us what to do, right? Systems, ah. 24 years later, I, I can promise you, my husband and I have lost millions in opportunity because from each unit closed and you've got the referral opportunity coming from each for each unit closed, multiply that out times the number of, I can promise you we've lost millions. So mm -hmm. the, it starts with the first blink. Mm -hmm. Resist the temptation to think I, I know everything and I can, I know what to do because maybe you're really successful in your own right. And yet, have you ever run a, mil a multi-million dollar real estate company? We have people that have gone before us and have proven systems and models. Mindset's everything, right? It yeah. starts with, am I in alignment in my life? Am I, am I following through on my vision, my beliefs, my perspectives? Or are we letting the battle of the mind win? right? How do you fill your cup every day? Filling your cup and having an energy plan completely has everything to do with mindset. 
How do you fill your cup every day? Do you know how you get joy? Is it going out, out and having a cup of coffee before the world starts spinning, right? Um, so I know that our time is up. Mindset is yeah. everything. You know, find a, men, find a mentor. Find a mentor. Yeah. You know, build a growth plan if you haven't already that's challenging and exhilarating for you. You know, if we're just stuck doing the same old thing day after day, that becomes kind of boring, right? Build a growth plan that challenges you and is exciting. And I've got yeah. so much more, but I know we're out of time. So I, I know, I know, you know, you know, I, I and I appreciate that. I, I was listening to Ben Kinney yesterday and he said, um, not Ben Kinney, but one of the people on his podcast said, people who get up early, they do so because they anticipate sparking something incredible in that day. Mm, love that. And yep. I thought it was like, so spot on, like, are you gonna, like, if you're not excited to get up in the morning, like what's happening, right? Like yep. it's, it's, it's that thing. Like you're going to do something amazing today. And, um, and, and I just, I like the maps organization in my head and my heart is just like, I don't know, for me, it's, it's intertwined with all of Keller Williams, because that's all I've ever lived. But I know that it's not like that for a lot of people. And I think that Tammy and I got uh, somehow connected through the cosmic something. <laughs> because I was living in Portland, Oregon, and she was living in Portland, Maine, and somebody out there probably looked at us and said, Oh, they're both in Portland. Let's put them together. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so I've been so, so lucky. And, and Tammy is always asking me like, hey, are you like, have we outgrown each other? Do we need other like coaches or mentors or whatever? And I'm like, no, tell me everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I so appreciate this opportunity. I appreciate you guys showing up, playing full out, play full out today. Look for those open doors resist the the games that our minds play from the first blink um coaching matters the person the, the hardest person to hold accountable is ourselves mm -hmm. coaching matters it's how it's where it's why mark and i are where we are right now it's because we have found a great coach go challenge yourself get around people that make you uncomfortable volunteer for things that make you uncomfortable that's going to set you up like my friend always said you're always auditioning for the next opportunity i so appreciate you sonia you you are don't tell my other clients but you are truly one of my favorite <laughs> favorite clients and i appreciate your professionalism your passion and your heart for helping agents succeed Thank you, Tammy. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for being here, you guys. Make it a great Friday. Have a powerful day, like Tammy says, and go get those open doors. Go through them. Awesome. All right, Bye. guys. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Tammy. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Jessica.